Persona is a game about relationships, the divine, moral compasses, the complexity between ignorant happiness and the freedom of choice, and the summation of life on both the physical and metaphysical planes. But what if you said fuck all that, I'm literally just vibing. Can you beat Persona 5 Royal with Joker only, on Merciless? Now, the rules on this one are pretty specific, since this challenge has some level of nuance to it. Only Joker can attack, and only Joker may be in the party, unless it's impossible otherwise, like Awakening Battles and the tutorial. This challenge must be done in New Game, because New Game Plus makes this shit baby mode easy. Also, I will be going to the full third semester ending, but the challenge is considered complete as long as the game ends. DLC personas may not be used unless I confuse them, meaning I can't just pull them out of the compendium, I actually have to use a type of fusion to create them. Finally, as usual, this is not an accurate retelling of the story, but there are spoilers throughout this entire video. If you haven't played Persona 5 Royal and want to, honestly just don't even watch. The game begins a little differently than usual, which pretty much auto fails the run, since Hips and Thighs here decides to join my party for a tutorial fight. The Kasumi sims find me and torture me into making her best girl, I pick Merciless difficulty, and name myself Simpo Mode after the entire Persona community. Ally McBeal begins her interrogation, and we take a drug trip down memory lane. I meet Otosan, and he gives me the Anne Frank treatment complete with diary, and that night I have a flashback in my flashback, recounting that one time I saw domestic violence on the street, but ignored it. The next morning so Drippo enrolls me in school, while Jabba the Hutt and Leia give their silent judgments. Wanting to make a good impression, I try to get to school early, only to get lost for the billionth time in the eternal maze of the subway station. I finally find my way when I run into Karen, the blonde haired white girl who loves the office, pizza, wine, and likes dogs more than people. This random guy shows up and gives her a ride, but drives off without offering me one. What an asshole. Vulgar boy shares my sentiments towards the guy with the Easter Island head, and we decide to go pull a prank on him. Unfortunately, we get caught and thrown in prison. The punishment for pranks is death for some reason, so I go mask off like Future, awaken our sin, and get Cody and crazy on Pyro Jack. Ryuji and I escape, rescue this exotic cat from Carol Baskin, and hit the bricks. We return to the real world, where I get scolded by every authority figure in the damn game. The next day I attempt to white knight for Haley Williams, but she ignores my advances, and Luigi and I head back to Howl's horny castle. Because Kamoshida's palace is tutorial, I can't remove party members, so they'll be forced to guard for the time being. This is to my benefit though, since this makes them excellent meat shields. After a gun tutorial as thorough as the United States is, we discover that teens are being tortured to perform better by overseers ran by an Asian. Or, in other words, TikTok. We try leaving the palace, get smacked by some henchmen, and Ryuji decides to stop being useless. And it is here that the run reaches its first legitimate problem. This fight is meant to capitalize on Ryuji's electric attack in order to remove the two bicorn from the fight. On Merciless, this is pretty much needed since you can't do much damage otherwise. Since Joker can't do much more than ask these enemies to play nice, it is essentially impossible to beat these enemies without a lucky crit or constantly dodging moves. I attempted this fight for 45 minutes and I never made it past killing one Bicorn. So, as insane as it sounds to say this early, I can all but confirm that no, it is not really possible to beat this game with Joker only on Merciless. Defeated, I use Ryuji to do what needs to be done and decided to drudge on, for the sake of entertainment and a 10 minute runtime. We leave the palace again and Ryuji tries making me feel better with ramen. This marks the only time he will try to use his noodle in the entire game. Kamoshida kills Mishima in three different ways, and On stops me from staring at a ladder to ask me about joining her weird Instagram pyramid scheme. She runs off and I track her down, where she breaks down because she's tired of me using her character to make white woman jokes. The next day Shiho takes a nap in the middle of the school, and somehow On ends up in the palace with us. Even after kicking her out, she manages to come back and get kidnapped, prompting Mystery Inc. to come save the day. 
On awakens her persona, and we're put up against Belphegor. Once again, I'm put in a situation that I really can't win. Belphegor is only weak to fire, and does massive damage this early in the game. I cannot fight him at all without fire moves, and you cannot get a persona with a fire type move until after this fight. So, for the second time in less than the first palace, the game proves that you cannot win with Joker only on Merciless. I use the other team members to win the fight, and head back to the real world. I go see Takami in a Y for provisions, get on my MacGyver shit, and get cock blocked at school by a fucking 30 year old. Back in the palace, the grind towards the treasure is kinda brutal. Enemies can one shot you if they hit your weakness or crit, and in Merciless, that means getting sent back to your last save point. Still, I push on until I run into the first major guard captain. And this fight sucks. This is nearly just as impossible as the Awakening fights since the Captain Tanks hits, has no inherent weaknesses, and can two shot almost every party member even if they are guarding. So considering I already lost the challenge, I decide to bend the rules a little bit. I allow team members to heal themselves so they could soak up more damage while Joker attacked the Captain. If you think that this nullifies the challenge even more, I wouldn't blame you. Regardless, that gives me just barely enough of an advantage to win, and I push on. I find the will seeds, fight against the remaining guard captains, and find the treasure without too much issue. Before the fight with Kamoshida, I fuse Slime. Slime is the only persona you can use to beat Kamoshida without grinding to an insane level, so it's a necessity. We try hitting a lick on Kamoshida's crown, but he was ready for us, and the boss battle begins. Kamoshida actually requires a good bit of prep, but Slime is the perfect persona for the fight. It's resistant to physical attacks already, but also has Tarunda, which makes Kamoshida do even less damage. That's a necessary ability, because only attacking with Joker at this low of a level makes this fight longer than a Joseph Anderson review. I'm basically just spamming Tarunda, healing when I'm low, and making sure that every other party member doesn't die too early, since that would put too much damage on Joker. Eventually Kamoshida takes the hint and stays down after 30 minutes, but I'm thankful that it only took one try to beat him. On fucking kills Kamoshida, and we bust out of the palace with his treasure in hand. In between anime arcs, I go hang with Ryuji, agree to fashion lessons from Sojiro, save On's dumbass from failing, start exercising to impress Kasumi, did a crossword puzzle that I definitely didn't look up the answer to, and celebrate with the homies on a successful murder. I also named my team the Chumps, because just like my fans, I do all the hard work while you guys sit around and laugh at my suffering. Hey everybody, obligatory midway speech here. Just a reminder that if you liked the video, consider leaving a like, commenting your favorite part, or I don't know, maybe even subscribing, you know? Also, if you're like, obsessed with me or whatever, you can follow me on my other socials, since that's where I tend to respond to people more often. Alright, cool, I'm done, back to the misery. Afterwards, Mishima breaks the 6 feet of space rule to tell me about the fan site, and Sojiro gives me the keys to leave at night, a trust I'll soon betray by attempting to romance several women around the city out of boredom. The chumps head to Mementos and meet Jose, creating a competition with Lil Uzi Vert for which short alien I love the most. I head back to the real world where Mishima and I get stood up, I fail my exams because I didn't study, and we meet the new school counselor, King Crimson. This joke will be funny in about two weeks, but just give it some time, okay? Snackman wants us specifically to see him, so I make a deal with him, starting the counselor confidant. Maruki actually has sick confidant abilities, and is required to get to the third semester, so I'll be spending quite a bit of time with him. Afterwards, this gay European stops us in the streets and wants us to come to his exhibition, and we meet a sensei, the Alexander Graham Bell of Art. We get suspicious of Matarame, and what do you know, he has a palace of his own. I died in the very first fight of this palace, forgot to save, and ended up redoing 30 minutes of story. Matarame's palace is much harder this time around, and only having Joker is painful. Every fight is tough, and without weakness abuse, I would have had to grind much harder than I did. Still, I managed to get through the first half of the palace, captured the treasure persona, and was stopped by a barrier, forcing the chumps to leave the palace. 
To remove the barriers, we convince a 16-year-old girl to strip nude in the name of art, but it works so, you know, whatever, I guess. There's a strong guard captain stopping Ryuji and I from progressing, so we have no choice but to fight. Thankfully, a weakness to fire makes this fight a pretty casual one, and Tony the Tiger goes down easy. Yusuke finds out that good artists create, but great artists steal, and he and On get teleported into the Upside Down with us. Young Bob Ross finds the courage to stand up to his master, and my second favorite Yusuke joins the squad. Yusuke's awakening fight was easy, but long as hell. The bird boys are weak to ice and get taken out early, but Frankenstein in the back has no weaknesses. This means I just have to wail on him until he dies, which takes a good bit of time. Leaving the palace, we decide to adopt Yusuke, and I head to Mementos to grind ahead of the Madarame boss fight. Grinding in Mementos is much easier thanks to Jose being able to increase in experience gain, so it's worth the extra time. I also craft Shikyoji, because for some reason he got buffed in Persona 5 Royal, so now he has 4 nullifications instead of 3. Heading back to the palace, I figure out a feat puzzle, become one with art, find the secret skulls, and traverse this MC Escher wet dream on my way to the treasure. The chumps formulate a plan to take Madarame's goods when Shiki's paper pet dog shows up. I forgot what Mikami was weak to, so I'm embarrassed to say that I actually lost this fight four times in a row until I learned it was electric. We secure our treasure route, and Madarame is the only thing left in our way. Before the fight, I prepare by itemizing our sin into a weapon, and I itemize Matador into the blood red capote, giving me extra defense and a crazy 20 evasion. I also spend time with Maruki to get the ability flow, giving me a chance to start the fight with charge and concentrate. With all preparations set, I send the calling card, take the treasure, and start the boss fight against Madarame. Now, I've said before that Madarame was the easiest palace and boss fight in Persona 5 Vanilla. Well, someone at Atlas must have heard me talking shit, because this fight is fucking impossible now, and I mean that literally. Madarame is just... I don't know, I can't even put this fight into words. Merciless makes this fight unbearable. The paintings have a way to hit you no matter what, since each body part has a separate ability. And even if you knock one of them out, another painting will immediately revive it. Madarame also only gives you two turns before he sprays you with the black goop, making you weak to every attack, which will one-shot you. This means that you have to kill at least three paintings at once in order for this part of the fight to even be possible. I tried this part for days. Literal days. I used almost every single advantage I could. I tried multi-hit moves, moves that hit all enemies, I tried buffs, debuffs, all kinds of personas, I tried it all. I even went back to grind to level 30 and still could not even get past the fucking first phase of this boss fight. The required luck in order to beat just the paintings is so specific that you need a miracle just to make it that far. I tried for 3 days and recorded 129 attempts at this boss fight. And while I'm sure it's possible if you just grind to an insane level, I'm just not that committed to one fight when the game is already so long. Instead, I ate my pride, lowered the difficulty to normal, and you would not believe it. This boss fight is still incredibly hard due to the second stage of the boss fight. It ended up taking 5 attempts on normal to beat this boss joker only. I'm showing all this footage at length just to show you how crazy this challenge is. I said in the Metal Gear Solid video that it was the hardest challenge I'd ever attempted. But I can say that without a doubt that Joker only on Merciless is truly, truly impossible. Thanks for watching. I actually finished this run entirely, so if you'd like to see part 2, please comment down below. Also, jokes aside, script aside, thank you guys so much for 30,000 subscribers. The growth has just been like insane, I can't even thank you guys enough. Um, this channel has only started making Persona content for about three months, and I can't believe that I've come so far so quickly. I can't be more grateful, and I'm just super, super thankful. Anyway guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.